I've been continuing with the testing of my Z80 computer project and I've moved on to testing the ports. This is the in-out ports. So there are two in ports, two out ports, all 8-bit. And as with the memory, the best way to test something like this is to throw a lot of data at it. And that's what I've been doing. So the easiest way to do this in a kind of semi-interesting way is to generate some uh, useful information. So rather than just writing a single byte and then reading a single byte back, um, what we can do is generate some um, interesting patterns through the ports. So to start with, what I've done here, just move the camera across a bit so you can see the circuit. So what I've got here is just a simple R to R um, resistor network to provide a D to A converter and that's fed out to a small audio amp and a speaker. So the input to my D2A circuit is fed from port 1 on the computer and what we can do now is just write some simple code. I won't show you the code if you're interested then let me know uh, in a comment and I'll show that in a future uh, video. Um, but what we're looking at here is just to send data out of the port. So what I've done is uh, written some very simple programs um, that use uh, lookup tables to send sine wave information out of the port. That goes through the D2A converter and we should hear that on the speaker and we should also be able to see it on the uh, scope. Let's move across a bit. So I'll dim the lights a bit so you can see what's going on a bit more clearly. And uh, the first code that I will send is a 256 step sine wave output file. So we should see the sine wave appear on the scope when we run the program. And we should also hear the tone on the speaker. So we'll just get the computer ready to accept the file. So our program is now in memory and we can run it. And hopefully you can hear the tone and you can see the sine wave on the scope. Nice clear sine wave. Very stable, so no issues there. So what we'll do now is send another file that has uh, fewer steps. So it'll, it'll update at the same rate, but because it's got fewer steps, we should get a higher frequency tone. So I'll get that sent through. So that one's now ready to run. And so as you can see, that's working fine. So I've done quite a few of these and I'll just go now to the highest frequency one that I've done so far. And we'll run that one. Okay, so that's about 1.67 kilohertz. And as with the um, DRAM testing, the odd thing with um, machines and circuits like this is you can get different behavior depending on uh, exactly how you send the information through and how quickly you send it. So what I did once I completed this testing, this just used um, fairly simple uh, loops and uh, lookup. Um, but I then wrote an optimized version that sends data much faster. So I'll now upload a program that has the same number of steps, but it runs a lot faster. So if you recall, this particular uh, test program we just ran runs about 1.6 kilohertz. So I'll send the, um, the optimized version of that lookup table and we'll try running that one. And that was 2.35 kilohertz. The change in amplitude, by the way, is that's a function of the filtering on the output of the D2A. So it's not really related to the actual data we're putting out. It's not um, something different in the way that the um, Z80 is putting the data out. It's just um, an analog issue. Um, okay, just in case you're interested, what we'll do is I'm just going to put something over the speaker to make it a bit quieter. So we'll start this running again. Okay, so um, while we're doing this testing, I've disconnected the amplifier. So you won't hear the tone, but we should still see the data appearing on the scope. So we'll get this running again. 
Okay, so there we've got the tone showing on the scope. And I'll now just look at the data output um, bits of the port. So this is bit naught, bit one, two, three, and jump to bit seven. So as you can see, the data is coming out very consistently, coming out at a fairly high speed, and it's doing pretty much exactly what we expected it to. Excuse the noise outside, we've got a bit of a storm at the moment. So I'll reconnect the power to the amplifier, and again we can hear the tone. So of course it wouldn't be all that interesting just listening to tones. You can send any information out that you want um, using a system like this, and this is one of the uh, beauties of a system like this that you design yourself in that you can send out anything you want and you can design it in any way you want. There are no restrictions, there are no uh, bottlenecks in terms of uh, needing library files and that sort of thing. You can do uh, whatever you like. So with that said, before we finish the video, we'll just have a, a bit of fun. So I had already loaded another program into another part of the RAM, so we'll run that one now. <laughs> 